Hill family, once again, Pastor E.A. Deckard of the Greenhouse International Church. Can you believe it's been seven months we've been out of church? But good news on today. Yes, we will continue our online service with the Spirit of Excellence, Facebook Live, Instagram, YouTube, all of those great avenues. But beginning this Sunday, you can mask up and show up at 200 West Greens Road. Come and experience the new GHIC. I am so excited to be back in the house of the Lord at Greenhouse International Church. Join us every Sunday at 1030 a.m. And don't forget to wear your masks. So what are you excited about? I'm excited about going back to the Greenhouse where you go to grow. I'm just online, it's, it's not really working for me being at work. The uh, alarm still going off all the time. Guys constantly talking to me. So I'm ready to get back, ready to get back to the new uh, welcome song, ready to just see the new members, sit down in the front row, do the tithe and offering, see my Bible, been looking for you. Uh, so I'm ready to get back to the greenhouse and see the women of the church. I'm ready to get back and, and fellowship with the women of the church to have a few prayers for the women that are in need of prayer. And if you're afraid to be there, you're thinking about COVID, spread you know, you, you, out. You ready so, to go? So I'm ready to go. All right, let's go. Hey guys. Good afternoon, it's Deacon Darren Decker. Hey, this Sunday at 1030, we will be back in the house at the Greenhouse International Church where you go to grow to reach your full potential. See you there, Sunday 1030. Enjoy. Ready for the nine o'clock new members class. Come out to the Greenhouse, 200 West Greens Road, 1030. We get ready to make it do what it do. We're going live. Five, four, three, two, one. Go G. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Be in the 
right there. Come on, what a mighty God we serve. Come on, for this is the day that the Lord has made. I don't know about you, but I will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, look at your neighbor say, neighbor, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, I find every reason to lift my hand. I find every reason to shout hallelujah. I find every reason to do my best. This is the day that the Lord
worship him right there. Come on, if you really believe that he's everything that you need. Come on, slip your hands to heaven and tell him you are. Oh, 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 oh.
I don't know what you come expecting God to do, but I come expecting God to throw his weight in this house. I don't know what you're coming to do, but I come expecting God to heal and deliver in this house. You are, you are. I come expecting Him to heal and deliver. You are, you are. I come expecting God to have His way. You are, you are. I don't know what you're coming to do, but you are, you are. You're welcome in this house. Say you are, you are. To all of my best, say you are, you are. Thank you. 
feel out a first time visitor for online, or you can do it in person. And we're going to bless some family with lunch. We pray that you will be blessed throughout this service. We get ready to bless you with a song before we do that. I got to do it. Y'all, y'all, pause for one second. I'm going to break through the song. Shane, come here real quickly. Shane, come here real quickly, real quickly. Man, li li listen, listen, listen. Listen, through this pandemic, I've lost track, but we. We have hired over 100 people in a pandemic. In a pandemic, God has blessed the Greenhouse International Church to hook up over 100 people with employment. We, we, we've been, for the last week, and we'll be doing it from October the 13th to November the 3rd, we've had the ability to hire about 75 people working at the church doing being drivers. This young man here is one of the drivers that was hired on the 13th. The route he had, this is the route he had, he was so responsible and so diligent that they said they don't want anybody else coming. They made a flyer, took my name off the flyer, put his name on the flyer. They, they loved him so much, but when he shared his testimony with me, Pastor Tim, I had to release it to the public. Listen, real quickly, in about 60 seconds, I want you to tell the people, because I believe that somebody in this house right now, or somebody online, that's struggling right now, because their past has to be in a, in a rock hole. But they don't understand the power of grace. They will sing that song, What a Mighty God. I kept thinking about you and how a mighty God showed up in your life. Real quickly, share with them, if you will, where you've been and where you're at and what God is doing in your life through His grace. It's by the power of God that I'm here. You know, pastor's talking about grace. I'm living proof that God's grace is real. Um, I turned 50 years old Friday. I hope nobody gets offended, but I spent 20 years of my life serving a white supremacy group. Wow. Um, so for me to be standing here today in front of all you folks, I spent 20 years of my life, 13 and a half years in the penitentiary, uh, 20 years serving a white supremacy group called the Aryan Brotherhood. So if you would have told me 20 years ago I'd be standing here in front of you folks, that would never happen. If you would have told me that I would have made it to 50 years old, that would have never happened. But by God's grace, I'm standing here for all you folks, and I got no love. I don't serve him, I serve love. And that's by the grace of God, I promise you. I met Pastor Deckard, I got my brother from Isaiah Meach right now, sitting out here. Through God, that's God's tool right there. He serves Greenpoint in a mighty way, just like Pastor Deckard. And ever since I came home, I'm just very blessed. And Monday, I started a full-time job. I got five aggravated felonies on my record. And I got a full-time job because of God. Working through training on Pastor Deckard. So, grace is real. God is real. I'm going to improve, I promise you. God bless you. Okay. So he came and told me, Pastor... I've been hiring a full-time job because of 29 and you. I stopped with no brother. 29 and myself, we only instruments pointing you in the direction of God's grace. It's God's grace that's making a way for you. And brother, I love you. I thank you for your spirit. And he said, hey, Pastor, how can I get one of those greenhouse church? Sir, I want to be a member of this church. So, so watch this. So, for all those haters, I...
song, thank you for your grace. If you would stand throughout this last song, if you're able to stand, those who have a little problem standing, you'll catch me at the opening scripture, but those who are in position stand. And let's begin to set the stage for the word of God to be declared. This song, thank you for your grace. You may stand in the duration of it. You will jump right into the word of God. Thank you for your grace.
go to Ephesians chapter 4 and give this praise team, this man, this deity, a great big hand of praise. Living this moment, amazing things. Stand with me when I love you. Ephesians 4 and 7. I want to thank you. Let's all stand across this field. You're able to stand. Your grace and mercy, Ephesians 4 and 7. Me through. The Bible says in Ephesians 4 and 7. As we continue this journey of grace, Lord. But to each one of us, all of us, to each one of us, grace is given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Take your seats. Thank you so much for being a part of our unofficial worship experience. We want to officially open the church back up until the first Sunday of November, so you are part of this month's unofficial reopening. But according to his grace, that he's given all of us. I'm going to try my best to stick to my notes to keep me contained. Because I'm about to go crazy. In a good way. Every Sunday they have this innate ability to get me off track. Because they'll sing a lyric that'll remind me of who God is. So when they say a mighty God, that just mess me up. Been so busy, I forgot a great monument in my life. Today, the third Sunday of October marks 30 years of me standing preaching the gospel. Yes, this this Sunday in 1990, yes, in the heart of Fifth Ward at the Great Union Missionary Baptist Church. This young, ambitious kid from the hood stood declaring a society of dead faith, which I began to focus and encourage my generation that faith without works was dead. Yo, no way's tired yet. 30 years later, faith, works, and grace have been the key factors that have kept me going through the ups and downs of both life and ministry. Over these 30 years, God has blessed me to become active in the community, community outreach, social justice platforms, and political activities. A kid from the hood who went through all kind of turmoil to get here, to stay here. But faith works and grace, and those same principles of faith works and grace can keep you, take you, and prosper you. The last few years of my ministry and life, I've been blessed to be the spiritual advisor. I pray you don't receive anything I say as being a braggadocious. I'm just sharing with you the mighty hand of God. I'm just sharing with you what the power of God is able to do for anybody and through anybody. I like the fact that God takes broken vessels and uses them greatly. I like the fact that you got to get back up sometimes for God to use you. I like the fact that God don't go looking always for the perfect vessel, but God go looking for the available vessel and perfectly uses him or her. Is there anybody in this house that you're glad that God did not veto you, that God did not look at you and declare you were not worthy because of what you went through, but God said because of what you went through, you are worthy to be a vessel. Is there anybody in this house that you can say that it was grace that kept you and grace that propelled you and grace that carried you and grace that elevated you and grace that saved you and grace that gave you a forgiving sinners and grace that picked you back up and put you back on straight. Is there anybody in here that's not too afraid to jump Say, I am a recipient of the grace package. If it were not for the grace of God. So what I tell you, I've been blessed to be the spiritual advisor, the 
strategic plan and campaign advisor with several political candidates. That's not me bragging, let's tell you the power of grace. I've been favored to lay hands on Hillary Clinton when she was running for president and pray for her. I've been blessed to walk the halls of Congress with the late, great John Lewis. I've been blessed to stand holding up high vote for the 18th Congressional District swearing in of Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. Yes, the boy from the hood who stood 20, 30 years ago in fifth war declaring faith without works is dead. And the faith of God stepped in and the grace of God has kept me. And the same grace is on my life. It's the same grace of Ephesians 4 and 7 says the grace of God is in all of us, upon all of us, and waiting for all of us. If you are ready for God to bust a move in your life, I dare you say, God, I'm available. Let your grace shine on me. Grace shine on me. Let your grace shine. Might get with terror to make a song great shine on me. That's the kind of season I'm feeling right now. That, that the favor of God, the grace of God, that when you stay committed to working for God, God will start blessing you in all kinds of ways. Now I say all of that to get to my son. Well, this morning we're going to make a major announcement. This brother Lily's going to shake up the political landscape in America. We get ready to launch out in faith and go deeper than we've ever gone before. Get ready to upset some Democrats, Republicans, liberals. Get ready to make some folks shake in their boots. I'm sure you've heard of the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, the Tea Party, even the Green Party, the Libertarian Political Party. But today I want to announce the Grace Party. The Grace Party. The Grace Party is inclusive. What simply means it includes everyone. Because we all need God's grace. Well, matter of fact, let me make sure I'm in the right room, in the right house to announce the, the birth of the Grace Party. If you need God's grace. I'm going to ask you one more one more. Jump on your feet and like back in grade school, raise your hand and declare, I need God's grace. So it looks like you are planning to join the grace party. I need God's grace. Paul says it like this in Romans 3 and 22. Paul says, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Christ Jesus, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. So you can forget about that Democrat and Republican, rich and poor, and black and white, and up and down, and what neighborhood you're from, and what zip code. The Bible says grace does not show any difference. You can be in a gated community, or you can be locked up behind some gates in prison. The grace of God will show up at both locations. You can be in Harvard, you can be in Yale, you can be in prison, or you can be at TSU or Grambling, and the grace of God shows up. You can be on the street corner, you can be on the street block, you can be around the corner, down the street, and the grace of God still shows up. The Bible says grace shows no difference. That's why I love the grace party. It is not impartial to anybody, but it's open and available for everybody. For verse 23 leads us to a major point. It says for all, 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 all in the White House and your house. For all in our good God of mine. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is Christ Jesus. In other words, the Bible says all have sinned. At some point in your life, some season of your life, some area of your life, you would need grace. Regardless of your race, you're going to need grace. Regardless of your economic status, you're going to need grace. Regardless of your educational background or lack of education, you're going to need grace. Regardless of your political party affiliation or if you've never got involved in the political process, you're still going to need grace. Your social status, your Instagram status, your Facebook status, your true status, and even your live status will at some point in time need grace. None of us can reach our full potential without the grace of God. I dare you one more, one more, to give God some praise for his grace. Not my grace, but 
God's grace. Not mama's grace, but God's grace. Not your friend's grace, but God's grace. Not, not, not your church grace, but, but God's grace. I dare you right now to celebrate God on this day. Celebrate God for his grace. They erased it from your body. Oh, have sin. So it makes us all qualified to be a part of the grace party. Because if all have sin, and the only way to overcome sinning is through grace. The judgment for sin is condemnation. The judgment for sin is hell. The judgment for sin is defeat. But Thank God on a cross on Calvary, Jesus paid the price and sent grace to recover all. So we all need the power of grace. We'll never forget when former President Barack Obama ran the campaign slogan of change. But because we are a polling place, I can't give it's deeper than that, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah. But the Grace Party slogan, y'all ready for this? Yeah. We're getting ready to launch the Grace Party slogan. Yeah. President Barack Obama said, change you can believe in, and President Trump says, make America great again. But the Grace Party slogan is, God's grace is sufficient. Yeah. God's grace is sufficient. Those who know me know that I'm a word spit me, that I like to Define words and look at the heritage of words and how they are written and what they mean in every content, every citizen, every verse, and every line in line. Because the same word can mean something different depending on the context of the text. Right. So when Bible says and when God says and Jesus says and now the Grace Party says God's grace is sufficient, what we are saying collectively is grace is enough. Right. Uh, somebody missed that right there. Grace is enough. Grace is adequate for every situation, every circumstance. That means nothing you will encounter, nothing you will deal with will be above the power of grace. You can slip up, mess up, trip up, but nothing you do can cancel the power of grace. You, you can go through a storm, you can go through a difficult season, you can go through hell and high water, but nothing you go through will be stronger than the power of grace. You Is the head. And his Holy Spirit, excuse me, his right hand made is 
the Holy Spirit. But the Bible says in Romans 5 and 8, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. Y'all pray for the preacher right here because I don't want to lose it right here. The Bible demonstrates that his own love for us in this. While, meaning in the midst of, while, in the midst of, while you were trapped in it, while you were still doing what you were doing, before you came to your senses like the prodigal son, before you got yourself together, when you were still riding dirty, when you were still living in hatred, when you were still a white supremacist, when you were, now you know that white folks are not the only folks with racist spirits. You know that some black folks with a whole bunch of racism running through their veins too. So while you were living with a spirit of hatred, while you were looking down on other people, while you were gospel, while you were a liar, while, while you were this and while you were that, the Bible says while you were in the midst of all of that, while you were still sinners, while you were still sinners, not when you got yourself together, but while you were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's why I'm telling you to elect Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and I'm telling you, when you elect Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, his running mate, the Holy Spirit will show up to guide you through this thing called life, because even while we were sinners, he died for us. Now, I know some folks that are love on us, I know some folks that are help us, I know some folks that assist us, I know some folks that we encourage us, but if you stay dirty too long, you mess up too long, you fall down too many times, they're going to get tired of you, they're going to call ID you, they're going to block you, they're going to run from you, they're going to turn away from you, but God so loved the world, while we were still sinners, his son Jesus died for us. So it's time America elects Jesus Christ into office and follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. If you really want America to be great, make Jesus the head of your life. And if he's the head of my life and your life and your life, then he becomes the head of America. And if he's the head of America, then the Holy Spirit becomes the advisor of America. And you can't lose when Jesus is giving the instructions and the Holy Spirit is explaining and breaking down the instructions. Turn your Bibles to Isaiah 9 and 6. I pray you're being blessed this morning. And turn your Bibles to Isaiah 9 and 6. For unto us, a child is born. Let me pause right there and remind you who that child is. His name is Jesus, Mary's baby. His name is Jesus, born of a virgin birth. His name is Jesus. As my grandmother in fifth ward would say, a bridge over troubled waters. His name is Jesus, a mind regulator. His name is Jesus, a friend to the friendless, a mother and father when your mother and father forsake you. His name is Jesus, a lawyer in a courtroom that's never lost the case. His name is Jesus, a doctor in the hospital who's never lost the patients. His name is Jesus, the Lord and Savior of all mankind. His name is Jesus, high and mighty. His name is Jesus, a friend but a friendless. His name is Jesus, 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 Jesus. For oh, two of a child is born. To us a son is given, and watch this, this is my point here, and the government will be on his shoulders. The government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Watch this now. If the government 
sits on the shoulder of Jesus, use your spiritual imagination to break down and dissect the word of God. If the covenant sits on the shoulder of Jesus, imagine now the covenant of the of America sits on the shoulder of Jesus just for illustration. I'm going to say just for illustration. I'm in mean, character of Jesus right now. Just in illustration. I'm not calling myself Jesus. Just in illustration. It's a funny story last night. Real quickly. Uh, um, last night, my three-year-old grandbaby was in the bed with my, my wife, and they were watching something on the iPad, and I walked in after a long day at work here, and I said, 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 Jenny, you know Jesus? She looked up and says, yes. I said, who is Jesus? You, Papa. I said, well, no, no, time out, time out, time out. No, no, Papa, not Jesus. But when I got to the restaurant, I said, God, thank you for allowing my three-year-old grandbaby to see Jesus in me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So back, back, back to the story, back to the story. Because every man, every man should represent Jesus in your house. Every man's children and grandchildren and wife should see him as Jesus. Go ahead. And they were somebody's head. Go ahead. But not seeing you as Jesus, there's only two forces, the Jesus factor and the Satan factor. Because they don't see you as the Jesus factor, then they're seeing you as the Satan factor. Even if they don't say anything about it, if they don't see you as Jesus, they see you as Satan. Okay. Another sermon, another time. Let's get back to your text. So the covenant is on the shoulder of Jesus. So he can give them sound advice to watch it. If the covenant sits on the shoulder of Jesus, he just turns his the covenant sits here getting sound godly advice from Jesus. Don't lock those children in cages. Don't not denounce racism. Don't cancel health benefits for people already hurt. The government has a chance to hear from Jesus. And it has a check on it. If they on his shoulder, they can talk to Jesus to get counsel. So they don't lean on they don't understand me. And start doing stuff that don't make sense. You, 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 you missed that. You missed that. Thing. So if the God that's on his shoulder to you, he can talk to them, give them godly wisdom, and they can talk to him to receive godly counsel. So, so it says, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting peace, prince of John 10, 10 puts it like this. The thief, the devil, Lucifer, the bandit, the jester. The thief comes on to kill, steal, and destroy. Come on, sir. But I, I've been Jesus, but I have come that they may have life and have it More to the abundant. full. Come on. PSA, public service announcement. Be careful who you follow. Woo. Be careful who you follow. Because the thief, the one who comes to steal, kill, and destroy, wants to trick you into voting for him. Oh, you missed that, you missed that, you missed that. And it's not based on skin color, it's based on agenda. Because there's some folks that look like you, it's not for you. Come on, sir. There's some folks in your race that's not running your race. Come on, sir. Don't be bamboozled by a man or a woman's skin color. It's only our house, but the heart is in. Okay. So be careful who you follow because the thief, the one who comes to kill, steal, and destroy, wants to trick you to vote for him. But Jesus, if I say, but Jesus, but Jesus comes to give us a full life and an abundant life. That's why I'm voting for Jesus. He's not going to trick me. He's going to bless me. He's going to grace me. He's going to favor me. He's going to advance me. He's going to heal me. He's going to deliver me. Is anybody here ready to vote for Jesus and walk in the abundant life? Life to the poor, no more sadness, no more depression. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Let's rush to the Turn your Bibles. Turn. Are you being blessed? Yes. Okay, I pray you're sharing the gospel around the globe. I pray you're being blessed. Turn your Bibles now to Luke chapter 4, and we will close here in Luke chapter 4. We will just walk through Luke chapter 4 on our way out of here. And I encourage you, if you're here today and you have not participated in the electoral process, if you have not voted, as soon as church is over, just get in line and go cast your vote. It's amazing, it's amazing at this little bitty church. 200 West Greens Road can feed 5,000 a month, can offer free COVID testing. 
free ride to the polls all across Houston, Harris County, and then give you a place to vote at. It is gracious. Girl, you blowing my mind this season. Okay, 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 okay. Turn to Luke chapter 4. It's about this on, on his grace. Because what I think about, going from eviction notice to See, everybody knows the whole story. Not too long ago that you were here. We, 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 we almost lost everything. Now God has blessed us with everything. So they call, why did you allow us to go through all that if you're going to do all this? Because I had to first, you had to prove yourself again. And then I needed somebody to represent my grace. Luke chapter 4, you there? So for the picture of Luke chapter 4, verse 1, the context of the text, Jesus had just got baptized. Jesus just, Jesus just got baptized. Well, our primary goal is to get everybody baptized. We got a pool back there somewhere. We, 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 we blow it up over here. We fill it with water. We get you baptized. If you've never been baptized, I promise you, you can get in line today and sign up to get baptized. Jesus had just been baptized. He was coming off, Pastor Tim, a 40-day fast. So that means he did a spiritual high. Got baptized. His father said, my son, I'm pleased. He goes a 40-day fast. Can some of you sisters in here imagine going 40 days like eating? Be satanic. The husband walking in the room, hey, boom, but Jesus went 40 days praying and fasting. And then all of a sudden, the devil shows up. You see that? Jesus had a spiritual high, and the devil shows up to tempt him. Oh, if it's a temptation season, this season. Understand this in life will be filled with tests and temptations. Paul says the good I would, but evil is always present. Don't take it personal. You're part of the group. If you're not being tempted and tested by Satan, maybe you're on his team. But when Satan comes to test you and tempt you, grace says, I got you. Grace says, I got you. Just keep the faith and stay in the word of God. Because look through Luke chapter 4. Every time the devil shows up to tempt Jesus, Jesus says, it is written. He replies with the word. He does not cuss back. He does not lie back. He does not get angry back. He stays in the word. And Jesus replies to the devil, it is written. It is written. It is written. It is written. Jump down to Luke 4 and 14. Watch this. Luke 4 and 14. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. And news about him spread through the whole countryside. Everybody was known about Jesus now. He was teaching in the synagogues and everyone praised him. He got everybody excited turning water to wine. Y'all know who y'all are. Hey, have y'all heard? That's his duty time. He got the power to turn water into wine. You ain't got to run down the specs no more. Just show up how Jesus is. He can turn water into wine. So the whole hood showed every revival now. The hood packed every revival. Hoping that there'll be another revival of water wine experience. So everybody was excited about Jesus. But I kept reading the text. Because he's getting ready to announce his political platform statement. And my Bible says Jesus now is rejected in Nazareth. He went from being well received to now being rejected. So be careful now, be careful. You will at some season be celebrated, other seasons be rejected. Because when you are standing for truth, when you're not just going to church, but you become the church. When you're not just reading the Bible, but you're living the Bible out. When you're not just claiming faith, but you're walking by faith. You will go from being received to rejected. Because those who want to be fake and hypocrites will reject you if you're trying to walk in the truth. But only this truth will set you free. So the Bible of Jesus rejected at Nazareth. Look at verse 28. We're still in Luke chapter 4. Oh, I pray you're being blessed. Luke chapter 4, verse 28. 
all the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. I'm going to tell you what they heard. When the people heard this, they got furious. They got up, drove him out of town, and took him to the grove of the end of the hill on which the town was built in order to throw him off the cliff. I mean, they get ready to assassinate Jesus. But look at verse 30. We're going to close with that one. But he walked right through the crowd and went on his way. Keep throwing in your mind because that's where we're going to end up at. Keep throwing in your mind. Come right here. Come right here and tell me what. Yeah, we, we, I, 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 I got you. I, got, I saw you. I saw you. I saw you. But he walked right through the crowd and went on his way. The Grace Party platform will make the devil mad. Because it takes the power from the oppressor and gives it to God's people. Oh, you missed your shot right there. The Grace Party platform takes the power from the oppressor and gives it to the people of God. Let's run through this now. What did Jesus say that made them mad? Look at verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor he has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind and to set the oppressed free you miss another time to shout and to set the oppressed free let me break this down real quickly we got five minutes to break this down the grace party will be led by anointed spirit-led believers. Stop voting sinners in office. Stop electing folks that only show up at church during election season. The grace party will be led by anointed spirit-led believers. The platform of the grace party, watch this now, proclaim good news to the poor. What does that mean, Pastor? The Grace Party has a plan for economic freedom. Well, opportunities for all. That's why we've been making sure everybody get a job. Because if no matter what God is doing in my life, ain't no fun till my home is get some. We'll, we'll, we'll break this down in more clarity next week. Economic freedom, well, opportunities for all. Freedom for prisoners. The Bible is referring here to criminal justice reform. They didn't just thank you. They didn't just start criminal justice reform. Jesus said, I have come to establish criminal justice reform. I have come to return to society with a future. Those who've been incarcerated, those who've messed up, those who've been labeled Jesus. I have come to reform the criminal justice system. Because Isaiah 29, 11 says, well, I know the plans I have for you. Amazing grace, 
How sweet the sound that saves a wretch like me. Uh, we're going to break that down next week. Look at verse 30 as we close. But he walked right through the crowd and went his way. He walked right through the crowd and went his way. So if you're here today, listen, listen, listen. If you're here today, what Jesus was showing you, you can have peace in any situation. And the grace part of Jesus walked through an angry crowd because he had peace, knowing that he was covered by grace. So if you hear this morning, this is the instructions. If you hear this morning, real quickly come and join me at this altar. If you desire, listen, you desire one to unite to become a member of this church, leave me at this altar. You desire number two to get saved, to give your life to Christ, just as you are. Don't try to get nothing right to fix nothing. You can't do it by yourself. We need the grace of God. You need this altar for church membership, partnership. You need this altar to receive the plan of salvation. And thirdly and finally, you desire for us to pray, not for you, but pray with you. You need this altar right now, real quickly. Real quickly. Meet us at this altar, real quickly. Come now, meet this altar. Those who desire membership, partnership. Those who desire the plan of salvation. Those who desire for us to pray with you, give me this altar right now. Give me this altar right now. Come now, quickly, come now. Come now, quickly. Come now, quickly, come now, quickly. 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 Everybody stand. Everybody stand. Everybody stand. Everybody stand. Everybody stand where you are. Everybody stand. Those who are coming, come. Remain standing. Listen, listen. This is going to be very unorthodox. Those who are coming and standing, I need, listen, 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 listen. I need us to shift real quickly. Integrity is very important. I need us to shift real quickly. We're going to finish off the call. We're going to finish off the call at the front window. So we're going to go outside at the front door and finish off the call. If you're coming down the aisle, I'm going to run outside. I need the whole church to meet me outside. I need to, if you're watching online, we're bringing this service to an end. Share it over and over again, rewatch it. We're getting ready to open the polls, but we can't do it over the altar also at the same time. We are a multi-faceted church. They gonna keep singing, and we're gonna run outside doing the mace. All these folks coming down the aisle, and we're gonna shift the altar. Everybody just beat me outside real quick. Wow, my God, what an exciting worship experience. Can you believe the excitement that was just in this place? Listen, we'll see you next Sunday, 10:30 a.m. Facebook Live. Mask up, show up, 200 West Greens Road, experience the place you go to grow. We just had an awesome experience. Remember, sow your seed, www.ghic.net, text 77977, Greenhouse All Cap. Whatever you do, stay connected to the new GHIC.